probably a bit of a, 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 a truism to say that all schools are academic schools. That's what schools are for. Schools are for academic work, principally. Uh, and I would say that's certainly true of St Edward's. We are an academic school. And I think the reason that the academic work is at the heart of everything that we do really comes, uh, I, mean, I guess there are several things. One of them is the rather paradoxical idea that um, to get through school and to a top university, the one thing, the very simple one thing that makes all the difference uh, is, is the academic work. The universities in this country are not particularly interested in anything else when it comes to application forms. The paradox uh, for us, of course, is that when our pupils are um, 25 and they're, in, you know, they're, they're working, just getting into the world of work, the aspects of their character that will really make a difference to them at that point are the things that are developed by everything else that we do at school. Um, and therefore, it's very important that we do so much more beyond the academic. But it's slightly more than that. I mean, another really strong reason why the academic work is at the centre is because the academic work is the focus of the development of mental toughness and resilience. Um, and it's those things uh, that help our pupils um, become stronger in other areas of life if they're really strong in the classroom as well. The, the, the key to our approach is the sense that um, with, a, with, a, with a set of skills, with a set of beliefs about uh, growth, you can achieve a great deal. And that um, ability can be moulded and in fact can be grown. I think there's a, there's a real danger in education if you almost overrank children, that they get this perception that they've got an innate set of abilities that can't be changed, can't be adapted. And what we really want to put into their, into their mindset, into their belief system, is that actually it's almost a decision to want to grow uh, and to grow your ability, to grow that academic sense. And, and it's a very powerful uh, tool in this school that we, we really uh, work with them, build their confidence, demonstrate to them that with application, with a set of skills, the world is their oyster. The development of the Shell curriculum, and that's going to feed through over the coming uh, five years into every year group. We've really been tackling the way our pupils learn uh, how the classroom situation works, how we work out setting and streaming, uh, all based uh, on ideas of collaboration and research um, uh, and uh, sensible ways of thinking about what is it going to be like for our pupils, not just at university but also beyond, beyond school. We have a, a shell curriculum that we've uh, started this year, a new shell curriculum, and uh, that concentrates very hard on the shells working collaboratively with each other. Uh, and so there's a lot of things that they're doing which uh, get them, give them a chance to do that. Uh, they're learning to discuss things from the outset, perhaps much less passively than has been traditionally the case. Uh, and I think that that's going to benefit them hugely as they go through the school. Our focus on the underpinnings of learning, what it is to learn, how it is to learn, I think is unique. The way we go about that, the way we coach our pupils, uh, the, the care that goes into, our, into that uh, is, is very distinct, it is distinct. Yeah, I think we're starting to treat our pupils in a different way. I think uh, uh, the feedback I get from our new pupils, from our shell, when they come here from their uh, other schools, and whether those are prep schools or state schools or, or other independent schools, they have commented to me on the fact that it is different in the classroom, that they feel that our approach is different, it's refreshing, uh, it's more dynamic and so on and so forth and I think that gives me uh, real hope that we're, we really have hit in uh, the right direction and that we've got somewhere to go with it. They can expect something which is perhaps a little bit unusual to what they've been used to. They won't spend a lot of time sitting in rows listening to teachers, they'll spend a lot of time working in groups as this classroom is, is set out to do. They'll spend a lot of time uh, collaborating with each other. We really do encourage them to work together and develop ideas themselves and discover their own learning as they go through. So a lot of the time the teacher will be hanging back and letting the pupils take the lead, which can be a little bit uncomfortable for some people to start with, but they do get used to it and we know we have to develop them and help them in, in doing that. The whole objective of education is surely to be challenged because if, if we're not being challenged then we're not developing ourselves. I think it's something that has to be caveated with a certain degree of safety, that, that's for sure. I think the, one of the most important ingredients for learning is um, being able to take risks and not worrying about what, how that turns out 
So I think in order to take on a challenge, you have to be a risk taker. And that's one of our biggest challenges as teachers, to make sure that pupils feel comfortable, feel supported, and make sure that they can take those risks that are needed. So I think that pupils always like teachers, you know, doing something really exciting with them. And I think they're putting a lot of energy into all these things. So yes, I, I'm sure that they do enjoy it. I mean, sometimes it's quite difficult, uh, actually, going and making a little film about something uh, when you're in the shells uh, and deciding who's going to be the director of the film and what you're going to put in it and uh, what's good and what's bad about it. And working collaboratively is not easy. Uh, sitting around a table and discussing something like this, uh, I was quite nervous about it to begin with, never mind them, but uh, I think they're rather proud of themselves when they can do it. And it makes them much more mature, I think, in their discussion of anything then in a class. So uh, it, it rubs off in all their subjects. We know that people arrive at different levels and we know people develop at different speeds and that's okay. So it's not a hothouse. I'm not saying I want everyone to achieve an A star because they won't all, but uh, everybody can achieve very highly and they can all push themselves and do better and do better all the time. And I want them to have no, I want, I want them to be confident to be ambitious for themselves. The St Edward's School sort of ethos is about safety and it's a safe place to make mistakes and that we coach them through that. Real success, I mean James Dyson talks about this, actually fa failure is key to really big success. If you haven't gone through some failures, then you probably haven't pushed yourself hard enough. And so we, we, we'd like to set the challenge such that, such that failures do happen, but we know with the pupils what to do. And in fact, actually, that's the same with our staff. We want them to push themselves. I recently completed a master's in teaching and learning from Oxford University, and I actually graduate on that this weekend, um, which the school supported, uh, and which has really helped me find the link between educational theory and practice. Um, so not only has that set me on a really good path in terms of making sure that I'm up to date with what the current th the philosophy on education and how that's evolving, but also it means that I can discuss with my colleagues. That's the other real key element to staying ahead with educational theory is the fact that I don't believe that our common room is satisfied ever with its current practice. And I think it's constantly trying to challenge and, and develop itself. And I'm on a daily basis challenged by my colleagues to try and think of new ways and develop with the, what is the latest research and theory. The teaching's amazing. Um, all your friends, you know, they're always in your lessons with you and uh, in the lessons, the, I, I like it, it's much more collaborative. Um, there may be some of other schools which for me, which I much prefer, I find it a lot better. Um, well, in biology last term, we uh, worked in pairs or threes and we had to we, we'd been learning about diffusion and osmosis and we had to learn about whether fish drink or not we had to re research it ourselves and then make a poster on it and um, use the knowledge that we already had to learn something new and then we discussed it as a class so we knew that everything was right. Good. I like the fact that we get stretched beyond the syllabus um, I think there's most of our lessons we will, if there's something we find interesting, then as a class we quite often take that on and look at it in a, maybe a slightly different viewpoint from the very structured syllabus. Um, and I think, I mean, I'm looking to do science at university, so particularly um, in the science subjects, that's obviously really relevant. And it meant at interview I had lots to talk about because we do more than just the basic. Spend two or three lessons planning prior to discussion on whoever would share the discussion and different sides and motives that can be brought, brought to it. And then we have the one lesson in the new Harkness room with the proper Harkness table and we discuss the idea and it's quite a nice way of planning for an essay because you get so many different points of view and actually you, it's kind of like just an essay in words because people are arguing against one another and you get a much more, like, much more developed process of how your essay might plan out than actually what's been much easier is than the writing of the essay post the Harkness discussion. What we really like to see them gain is, is, is a real sort of joy and happiness uh, in, in, in being involved in things. And uh, you know, principally that's academic things in the first instance, but then 
spilling out into other areas of that life. Those, the, those girls that like playing hockey should really be out there playing hockey you know, with a big smile on their face because that really makes a difference. You know, the boys that want to go and row in the first eight and row for Great Britain, they should be doing that with, well, I'm not sure you get a smile on your face when you're rowing at that level, but, but uh, they, should, they should do that with, with real enthusiasm and real joy because it's that, in the end, that lights the fire within the pupil that makes them the, 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 the future person of real value if they realise that uh, intellectual, academic, uh, other areas, extracurricular areas are really exciting. In particular, I think, if they think that people are really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we want them to get. We want them to realise that the world is exciting and that the world is within their grasp and that they have some control over the future.